If you happen to be on YouTube looking for Pokemon doing some cool stuff, you have found yourself in the right place, my friend. How's it going? I've got a Wi-Fi battle here against an opponent that's using some absolute units. Very scary stuff. And of course, I've got my very fun team that's got some, some tricks up its sleeve. So let's go ahead and jump right into the match. So from the start, I'm really not sure what he wants to lead off with. So I just decide to play it safe, toss out my sand jobs. As it turns out, he actually expects that because he ends up leading off with the water doggo. And Suicune is going to absolutely destroy my dude Sandslash. So I can't really get my Stealth Rock up early. And I have to just kind of use my answer to Suicune right away. Which is going to be the Cray Dilly. Young Dilly comes out. I'm talking about eight dicks flopping around on his head. He's ready to go. And at this point, it's kind of... I, I need to conserve this, this, this Cray Dilly as much as possible. Because it's kind of the only answer to Suicune. And that I do, of course, have the Storm Drain ability. Um, and just having Cray Dilly alive on the team actually kind of puts this Suicune in a position where it's going to be afraid to go for Scalds and then instead has to uh, go for Ice Beam. So, uh, being the special special defensive unit that Cray Dilly is, I am able to take less than half from that and then this allows me to uh, toss some seeds his way. So, this Cray Dilly is a little bit different than the usual. Of course, this is kind of a curse, like, defensive sweeping type of dude. Um, so it's not the best against Suicune. However, uh, getting the Leech Seed on there is going to make it much more manageable. With that Leech Seed recovery plus leftover, um, this thing's not going to be able to do a whole lot. So now I just decide to go right for the Rock Slide, get some damage on this thing. And at this point, I'm kind of thinking if I could just knock this thing to range uh, to where something else can be able to take care of this, that I'm honestly fine with that. Because Suicune is kind of the arch nemesis of my team. There's really not a whole lot uh, that I've got that's like prepared to handle this thing. So... Me going for Rock Slide there is kind of unfortunate. It, it reveals essentially that I don't have something like a Seed Bomb, which fucking Great Dilly does not get access to, I don't think, in this game. So I don't have any grass coverage. Um, but still, I'm able to kind of have the upper hand against Suicune. Like I said, if I can weaken this thing, chip it down to range where, you know, something like a Crunch from Sharpedo can do the trick. That's mainly what I'm going for. Um, but here I decide to actually switch into Moltres. I know he's definitely not going to go for the... Uh, the Scald here. I'm expecting an Ice Beam and I know the Fire Bird can come in here spicy as hell, take an Ice Beam and then my ascent, my plan is really to kind of just stall out another turn of the Leech Seed and I'm thinking if this works out I can just go right for a U-turn, pivot out, go back in the Cray Dilly, soak up a Scald, get nice and hydrated and then be, you know, kind of in a similar position. Um, but at least the pivot is, is a decent play because if he does switch that gives me a good position as well. So he actually does end up switching out. I don't know what he thought this chicken was going to do to him, but he's afraid and decides to go into the Infernape. He probably saw the Cray Dilly shenanigans happen. He probably expected the pivot or switch directly into Cray Dilly. But the spicy McChicken Nugget does get the U-turn off. So that puts me in a way better spot because now I can go into, into whatever I would like. And this monkey looks like he could use some hot dogs. And by hot dogs, I mean death. So I bring in the Dug Trio. Um, and I, of course, outspeed. And with the Arena Trap ability, this monkey is absolutely stuck. And he's going to be forced to consume these hot dogs like that one dude that wins all the competitions. Call this monkey Joey Chestnut, except for consuming like 80, he's gonna just have three. So an earthquake does take care of this thing and the best revenge switch in in the game is already doing doing work. Infernape is a very scary Pokemon and it's good to get that thing out of there. So now he gets a free switch into whatever you would like. We're up nice six, five, uh, but there's still a lot of big threats to take care of. So he goes into the Glyce score. Of, choice, uh, of course being choice banded, I, I can't, uh, you know, stay in an earthquake here. So I decide to go right into a switch into Frostlass. The reason for this is because it's likely that the stone, uh, the stealth rock is coming, the stone rock, and I have my focus ash still intact. So at this moment in time, I'm able to swiftly dodge the rocks and uh, just whiz right by me, and I can just then kind of force this thing out with an ice beam. Um, he does definitely have some pivots into an ice beam, something like the Snorlax. However, I'm just gonna go right for the play here because it's not worth over predicting and going for a double switch. But of course he does just bring in old Tubby and <laughs> he is just gonna absolutely soak up this Ice Beam. I'm doing negative damage to this Snorlax, I damn near heal, heal the guy. And one thing to note is that I actually do not see leftover recovery, which is kind of strange. Um, I'm gonna actually just end up going for the taunt because what I do not want is this thing to start setting up curses. Um, because once the Snorlax gets like two curses, it's gonna be absolutely impenetrable and that's not what I want. So I stay in, I'm able to take the crunch, doesn't actually even knock me to my sash. Um, but that is unfortunate because now Frostlash is, you know, his sash is kind of taken care of. But I do need that thing for later 
to be able to take care of the Gliscor, which is a another very scary folk Pokemon for my team to deal with as long as Frostlass is alive, though I should have an, uh, an answer. So, I decided to switch into the Sand Slash. The reason for that is because I'd like to get a nice little Rapid Spin, um, but he says Snorlax does not like this matchup and bring, brings back in the Water Doggo. Um, but I'm actually kind of fine with this matchup because of the fact that he can't really force, he can't go for the Scald because he's probably expecting the Cradilly to come in and that's where Cradilly just existing kind of puts this, uh, puts some pressure on it to not go for the Scald. Um, so I know I can take an Ice Beam, I decide to go for the Rapid Spin because I want to get those rocks out of the way. If Frostlass is going to have a chance against the Gliscor, um, that's pretty much what I need to do. So. I do a little bit of chip damage there, which is nice, and you know, Suicune's sitting at about half, and at this moment in time, I'm really just hoping it doesn't have rest, because if it's Calm Mind Rest, Scald, and Ice Beam, uh, that's going to be really terrible. Suicune is such an annoying Pokemon to play against, it's unfortunate that he looks so cool, that I just, I'm forced to hate it, but, you know, it is what it is. So, I go for the Stealth Rock here, as I'm faster, I get that speed boost from the Rapid Spin, which is amazing. Sand Slash kind of just doing the only thing it can really do. Uh, like I've said before, you know, Sand Slash kind of blows, but he's cool, so I just bring Sand Slash, and he's red and shiny, and I just got, I'm obligated to do so. Um, but at least I was able to Rapid Spin and got up my Stealth Rock, so I mean, there's kind of a little bit of utility I got out of the dude. If it got Knock Off, it would be just literally way better in this gen, but, you know, it doesn't. So, now I get a free switch into whatever, and now I'm thinking, alright, Cradilly, I have... I have an opportunity here. This thing does not have any Calm Minds up. If I lay down the Leech Seed, I can potentially get some stuff going. But my dude knows that a fight against this Dilly is not easily won because he's seen what's happened earlier. And uh, he actually decides to switch into the Gliscor. So this actually puts me in an interesting position. I can pretty much expect that he's going to want to get that Stealth Rock back up. So I could either switch back into my Frostlass here and then go for the Ice Beam, but he's just going to bring back into Snorlax. And I really feel like that's that's an uphill battle that I'm not really looking to get myself into. So I decide instead that it's it's honestly Cradilly time, baby. I can start setting up some curses. The good thing is I haven't revealed what type of Cradilly this really is. He's only seen, I believe, just Rock Slide and Leech Seed. So he is not aware of the fact that I'm about to start cursing. So I yell some profanities here as he actually ends up going for the Defog. He decides to get rid of the Stealth Rock on his side instead of setting up his own. Um, but honestly, this Gliscor, as long as it decides to stay in, is a perfect mon for me to get my Cradilly to do what it does best. So I go for the curse there, drop my speed, but I gain myself a nice little plus one in attack um, and defense, which is amazing because with the defense buff on this thing, with my natural special defense, I honestly, it's, it's a very tough Pokemon to kill. So, even just with one curse. So, I'm in a pretty good spot here. Plus, the Infernape's already taken care of. So, Cradilly is about to absolutely eat on this fool as he is honestly unaware of the threat. He decides, rather than going for Earthquake and starting to get some chip, he's just going to set up the Stealth Rock of his own. Because he's probably still worried about Frostlass not being able to switch in. And considering, you know, Sand Slash is already dead, there's no way I can Rapid Spin those away. So, I mean, I guess, and Sand Slash Rapid Spin didn't end up working out in the long run. But I've kind of switched mindsets here. I'm like, you know what, we're just going to get Cradilly to work instead. And I guess, you know, Sand Slash getting rid of the rocks did allow me to get basically two free curses here as he had to defog and then set up Stealth Rock. Um, so I'm like, you know what, fuck, I'm going for another curse. If I'm going to have a chance here, plus three is going to be my best position to be in as he actually just decides to U-turn because it, you know, plus two defense, he's not going to be able uh, to do much. So he decides to go into the Togekiss, which is interesting because he saw that I have the, the Rock Slide. Um, but whenever Togekiss' his big fat ass comes in, he's probably expecting to try to get some flinch stuff going. I'm thinking like maybe it's like an Aura Sphere. Um, but I figure Air Slash is still probably the better play to try to get like a couple flinches. So Dilly is going to have to face the absolute Satan that is Flinch Togekiss. But I believe, because using Cradilly gives you good karma. I don't make the rules. This dude is overlooked and I'm here to, to make the difference. But he goes for the Air Slash. I do not flinch, which is amazing. Also note... I did like no damage because Cradilly with that special defense bulk is, like I said, <laughs> impossible to take care of unless you have like something really in the back set up for it. So I do land the rock slide there. It is going to take care of it, obviously, at that clean plus three attack. And uh, he's probably like, oh shit, I should not have let this Dilly do what it's done. And now he's about to face the consequences. So he goes into Suicune here. He knows the damage from Ice Beam. He's seen it. Um, and it does less than half. So goes for that Ice Beam, actually does pretty much nothing. And this allows me to just fire some rocks off at it. Just go for the stab, rock slide, thinking maybe it would knock it out here. Um, but even with the critical hit, it is not going to do it. Because 
Like I said before, Suicune is an absolute menace to society and should not be allowed. I swear to God, this Pokemon <laughs> is an issue. Plus, it's at range where it could potentially start to, if it wanted to rest, it could do it here. Um, but he actually just stays in and goes for the Ice Beam. He probably figured me setting up Leech Seed on a sleeping Suicune probably would have put him in a better or worse position because then I would start to heal pretty well. And that is not what he wants. He's actually just going to basically dedicate this Suicune to chipping me down to the point where he can then revenge kill. Um, but the damage is done. The Cradilly is done what it needed to do. I took care of a Togekiss and a Suicune with the Cradilly, And that is some shit you absolutely do love to see. Can I get a W in the chat? So... Now he decides to switch into Alakazam, which actually is probably arguably like the best revenge killer in the game. Um, and he just is able to take care of me with an energy ball. So, down goes the Cradilly, but not before the damage has been done, my dudes. You absolutely, you love to see it. But, um, I actually have a couple different options here. I could have gone Sharpedo, gone for a Protect, and then after Speed Boost, I'm actually faster. But I realized that every Alakazam is pretty much going to be Focus Sash because... You pair that with Magic Guard and not having to worry about taking uh, hazard damage. You pretty much keep the Sash the whole time. And Alakazam, like, guarantees you multiple kills, you know, whenever this dude's brought. So, uh, he is going to, in fact, eat my hot dogs like a bowl of cereal with his double spoons. And that is actually fine because Doug Trio did exactly what it needed to do. And now, as long as Sharpedo is able to hold his end of the deal, we should be able to take care of the rest of the remaining mons. He does have three Pokemon left. It's going to be... The Snorlax, the Gliscor, and of course the Alakazam. So, I bring in half of my Shark, and without his tail, he's not looking too quick, but all I gotta do is go for that Protect. Gonna give me that Speed Boost, and then after plus one, I am faster than Alakazam. And Sharpedo is an absolute monster, I swear to God. At the in late game, this thing can sweep like a fucking broom, and it's just amazing. I've been using the same Sharpedo for, for years, and uh, <laughs> he doesn't even need his Mega no more. So... Uh, I get that speed boost, and at this point, really, all I have to do is just click crunch. Um, I am worried about the Snorlax, however, I'm thinking maybe I can even take an attack from that thing. Um, but he actually just decides to switch directly into the Snorlax, who I kind of thought that I had more damage on this thing at this point, but I don't. And I go for the crunch, and luckily, I'm able to get the defense drop, so... Crunch is doing exactly what I needed it to do. I knew it was going to be a pretty close range with the Snorlax regardless. Um, but with that defense drop, it's basically a guaranteed kill here, and the shark is about to absolutely feast. I, just imagine if I was 100% of a shark, even just half is out here, uh, just, just munching on that thing like a like a whale in the middle of the ocean. Get that blubber, and I'm feeling better than ever. So, uh, of course, I do have the Ice Fang for the Gliscor as well, so I'm looking like I'm on top of the world here with this shark. As in comes the Gliscor, and I really wish that there was Stealth Rock up, because just that little bit of chip damage... Uh, it would guarantee the Ice Fang, but I believe it's actually a roll to be able to take care of this thing. So, I go for the four times super effective Ice Fang. And I am literally the luckiest shark in the world because it lives with five HP, but it flinches, which is actually insane. Like, I'm pretty sure that could have been minimum damage, so he wasn't supposed to live that anyway. But the shark says, no, 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 I got you, bro, and I get the flinch. Which is actually crazy, so one more Ice Fang is going to be able to take care of it, and all that is left is going to be that Alakazam. So, that series of events has kind of proven that Sharpedo is just the absolute goat, and there's just nothing you can do when, <laughs> when the Sharpedo gets lucky. Uh, plus, I'm at like 900 speed right now, so I'm out here just zooming around the battlefield, even though I'm just sitting there floating, not even in water. And the Alakazam is about to taste... Uh, the likes of this here crunch. So that is going to be the end of the match. Um, and honestly, definitely would have gone a whole different route had the Sharpedo not got that late game flinch or I guess the defense drop. But with the Moltres being my last Pokemon, um, Sharpedo knew he just had to put the team on his back. And uh, <laughs> I just really like these close matches. I don't know. I thought it was a fun one. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure to leave a like on the video if you did. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.